years ago, a man was having a reoccurring dream of a ferocious lion chasing him. And whenever he would have this dream, he would take off running. And one day he went to see a counselor and shared with the counselor this dream of this ferocious lion chasing him. And the counselor said to him, the next time you have the dream, I want you to stop, face the lion, and ask the lion, who are you, and why are you chasing me? So sure enough, a couple of weeks goes by, and this guy has this reoccurring dream of this ferocious lion chasing him. So he takes off running, but then it dawns on him what the counselor said. So he turns around, and he faces the lion, and he looks the lion in the eye, and he says, who are you? Why are you chasing me? And the lion says, I am your strength and courage. Why are you running from me? When God is ready to bring a man to another level, he will invite that man to turn and face the very thing he's been running from. And when I say man, I am also implying woman. Because when it is time for you to release your brilliance, your potential, your insight, your genius, you must turn and deal with those things because whatever you don't deal with will eventually deal with you. When I wrote the book, Release Your Brilliance, I was in a journey in my own life. I was struggling to find my identity and to really understand why am I here. And one day, my mentor, who has had the most profound impact on my life, a man by the name of Mark Sharonas, said to me one day, he said, how are you doing? And I said, Mark, if I had blonde hair, blue eyes, and white skin, it would be very easy to succeed here in America. And Mark said to me, he said, Simon, black is beautiful. And I said, how can you say that when you're a white man? And he said, Simon, when Ruth and I first got married, we adopted two young African-American boys, and we have been telling them since day one what they could be instead of what they couldn't be. Right. You are blocked in your mind and your body thinking the pigmentation of your skin defines who you are. Right. You weren't born to fit in. You were born to be brilliant. Right. And when he said it, it unlocked something in me because... When it is time for you to move into your destiny, you will connect with a brother who holds the key to speak a word over you to unlock what's in you. And when he unlocks what's in you, it immerses you on a quest to discover three questions and to answer them. Where have I been? Why am I here? And where am I going? The greatest tragedy in life is not death. The greatest tragedy in life is to be alive and not know why. If a man is to go from nothing to something, he must submit himself to realizing that a setback is a setup for a comeback. I'm speaking over somebody's life yes, right now. Know. Just allow me to be sensitive to what needs to be said in this moment. How many of you like diamonds? So, I see all the ladies raising their hands. <laughs> Brothers, let me let you on a little secret. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> when a diamond is found in the core of the earth, a diamond, as you know, is formed through heat. Everyone say heat. Heat. Pressure. Pressure. And change. change. Heat, pressure, and change. So this diamond that possesses the potential to shine in its rough state must go through heat, pressure, and change. In order to go from nothing to something, to discover 
who you are, as you go through that process, you will develop an appetite for the spectacular. And when you develop an appetite for the spectacular, you no longer settle for the crumbs of the ordinary. Because when you find your brilliance, what is brilliance? If you were to go to dictionary.com, brilliance would be defined as the ability to shine. I like to say brilliance is your creative potential. It is your creative genius. In my research, some of the, the work that I, I have particularly shared as it relates to brilliance is the work of Dr. Howard Gardner, who is a professor of education at Harvard. Dr. Gardner and his team of researchers did an interesting study over a 20 plus year period. And what they discovered is children up until the age of four are operating at the genius level. The same group of children were studied in their early 20s and only 10% were still operating at the genius or the brilliance level. And in their late 20s, only 2% were still operating at the genius or brilliance level. So the question that you probably have, like I had, is where did the genius or brilliance go? It didn't go anywhere, but it became buried by a society that says, color within the line, sit down, give it back, you can't do that. And what happens, the more and more an individual continues to hear what they can't do, where they can't go, and who they can't become, there is a neurological path that is created in the brain that causes an individual to shut down. So what happens, they show up at a place called work. <laughs> and they have potential. They have insight, they have genius in them, but here's the deal. If my brilliance is to be released as I go from nothing to something, I must be in an environment or an atmosphere that celebrates me rather than tolerates me. All right, all right. And when a man is in an environment that gets him, that environment invites him to be a vitamin, not just an aspirin. And when a man understands how to use his creative potential, his creative genius, his creative insight, and release it, he recognizes that when he comes into an organization like Brother to Brother, he is not here to make an impression, but he is here to leave an imprint. When I understand how to leave an imprint, I recognize, oh, brilliant one. You do know that you're sitting next to the old brilliant one. Right. Just right. lean over and say good evening, oh, brilliant one. <laughs> when I recognize that I am next to old brilliant one, I realize I am not here to compete against you but I'm here to complete you. And when I understand how to complete something, then a man will find his vision, he will find his voice, and he will find his value. I want to take a few moments just to unpack that for a moment. The greatest tragedy in life is not blindness. The greatest tragedy in life is for a man to have sight but no vision. What happens in the development of a man is God will give you a picture of what you can be, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. But you must go through the process in discovering how to release the brilliant potential that's in you. So sometimes you have to go through stuff. Let me take you on a quick journey. 24 years ago, my mother and father loaded the family station wagon and drove me from Buffalo, New York, down to Atlanta, Georgia, where they dropped me off at Morehouse College. At the end of my freshman year at Morehouse, they called and said, we don't have the money to send you back to school, nor do we have money to bring you back home to Buffalo. How many realize a brother didn't feel the love? <laughs> so here I am, dropping out of Morehouse College, Moving into a drug-infested community, though I was not on drugs, it's all that I could afford at the time. Only had a mattress on the floor, bright green beanbag from the 70s, a couple of milk crates turned over with a black and white TV on top of it, with a hanger hanging out of the back of the TV, with a piece of aluminum foil wrapped around the hanger. How many have a visual so far? 